Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? There are more filmmakers and content creators than ever before, and it's great to see that audio is getting more attention. It can be just as important as your picture quality, but wireless microphone systems have traditionally been a bit daunting. This time, I'm gonna review a system that promises plug and play simplicity, and it's from a manufacturer you may already be familiar with. Let's take a look at Sennheiser AVX. Sennheiser's G3 wireless is very popular among content creators, and AVX is meant to be the next step up. It comes as a lavalier or handheld kit, or as Sennheiser was kind enough to give me, a combo kit with both. There are a few variations in these kits that differ in their options for microphone capsule, but all of them include the same receiver and accessories. No doubt the lavalier kit will be the most popular choice for filmmakers and content creators. The AVX body pack transmitter is compact and really sturdy. The transmitter body is made out of metal and has a satisfying weight. Just like the G3 series, it has a 3.5mm input jack, so if you already have a favorite lavalier mic, you can bring it along. Right next to the input jack is a mute switch, which I honestly have mixed feelings about. They can be useful, but sometimes talent likes to start pushing buttons, and that can get you into trouble. And while the mute switch isn't defeatable, it is at least quite low profile and difficult to engage by accident. On the left side are the only two buttons on the transmitter, power and pairing. There's a simple multicolor LED on top to show status and an LCD screen on the front. This shows the pairing name and wireless RF signal strength as the receiver sees it, a trick we'll talk about a little more later. The screen also has a battery meter that clearly lists the amount of time you have left, which is a nice touch. And speaking of batteries, a lithium ion rechargeable pack is included in the kit. It's rated for 15 hours of use on a charge, plenty to get you through a day of shooting. On the bottom of the pack is a micro USB port used for charging, so no special cables or battery rechargers are necessary. The kit includes an AC adapter, but even the one for your phone would work. A status LED next to the port glows red when the battery is charging and turns green when it's done. You can swap the battery pack for another one easily enough if you need to, but because of the placement of that USB port, you can leave it in the transmitter while charging, which means you can also use the transmitter while charging. This can be really handy for setting up a point-to-point -point audio link with AVX, like if you want to tie into a press bridge at an event. Finally, if you're out in the field and the battery runs flat, Sennheiser does offer an optional battery cage that takes standard double A's. The lav mic that came with my combo kit is Sennheiser's ME2. It's a condenser mic with an omnidirectional pickup pattern, great for video. It's quite small and unobtrusive. Some labs can be annoying to work with, but this one never gets in the way. It's terminated with a threaded locking connector and the cable is almost two meters or about six feet long, which is almost too much. It's an overall solid mic. For my vocals, I wish it had a little more low end response and a bit less mids, but this is easily taken care of in editing. And if it's not obvious, all the audio in this episode was recorded through the AVX system. The handheld transmitter has many similarities to its body pack counterpart. Durable metal construction, 15 hour lithium ion battery, the same LCD screen. If you get the handheld only kit, it'll have a mute switch and MMD 835 cardioid dynamic mic capsule. With the combo kit, it omits the mute switch, which you can probably guess I'm happy about, and has an MMD42 omnidirectional dynamic mic instead. What's nice to see is that the capsules are interchangeable. The transmitter will work with any of Sennheiser's Evolution Series wireless capsules. And it's great to have this flexibility since not all pickup patterns are appropriate for all situations. The transmitter is streamlined and easy to handle, but while the power and pairing buttons are out of the way on the antenna piece, they're difficult to use. They're small and you pretty much have to use your fingernail to operate them. I do like that the status LED is integrated with the power button, 
but it's a bit too bright. Remember, handheld transmitters are one piece of pro audio gear where aesthetics do matter since they're visible on camera. That said, I think the AVX handheld overall does a good job in this regard. It looks professional and doesn't stand out. Perhaps the most interesting part of the AVX series is the receiver. It's a completely different form factor than you may be used to or expect. It's very small, about half the size of the body pack, and it's designed to plug straight into the XLR input on a camera. The built-in XLR connector swivels almost all the way around so you can get it oriented vertically. It's also no wider than the connector, so you can use two of these receivers side by side. Of course, not everyone has a camera with XLR inputs, so Sennheiser includes a hot shoe mount that hides a tripod thread on the bottom as well. There's also a belt clip adapter and an XLR to mini jack cable. The receiver is made out of metal, just like the transmitters, but its small size makes it pretty light. With most cameras, when you go handheld, you don't really feel the extra weight. That small size does limit the controls, but the AVX receiver manages to provide most of what you need. The power button doubles as the battery check button. Press it and you'll get a bar graph of green LEDs showing the receiver's charge remaining. The AF out button cycles through four different audio output gain settings, 0, negative 10, negative 20, and negative 30 dBU. The pairing button's used as you might imagine to kick off pairing with the transmitter. The status light next to it will show green when you're good to go, but it'll also turn yellow when a transmitter's been muted, and it'll start blinking red when that transmitter's battery is low. I'll admit I miss things like RF signal strength and a proper transmitter battery gauge, but given how small and convenient this receiver is, it's a compromise I think many will be okay with making. Another compromise you may have to think a bit harder about is the battery. A small receiver means a small battery, and you're looking at about four hours of runtime. That's not a whole lot if you need to shoot all day, but to be fair, Sennheiser did add some smart features to help. First is that the AVX receiver is able to sense phantom power at the XLR connector. It's not powered by phantom power, but the idea is that you probably turn your camera or field recorder off during long breaks between shots so the receiver can turn itself on and off accordingly. Second, you can use the receiver while charging the battery. Just hook up a USB power bank and keep rolling. And finally, the battery pack is replaceable, so you could, of course, just get a spare or two. Though they do cost about 50 bucks each. As Sennheiser claims, the AVX system is indeed very simple to use and reliable. It's a fully digital system with 24-bit, 48 kilohertz audio using the CELT codec. Latency is about 19 milliseconds, which is less than a frame of video. Part of the reliability comes from the active frequency management the system performs. The receiver is always scanning for interference and available frequencies. If it finds interference, it can tell the transmitter about a clean channel, and the two make the switch seamlessly. Not that interference should be a regular occurrence because AVX operates in the 1.9 GHz frequency band. It's free to use and outside the range for broadcast TV and cell phones, and it's also away from the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth spectrum. Sennheiser says you should expect a working range of about 30 meters or 100 feet, though I suspect that number is a bit conservative. The signal is also encrypted using 256-bit AES, which can be great for ENG work. It'll keep your competition from being able to listen in on your scoop. So that's the reliability. Where's the simplicity? Well, I found that you don't really need to think about any of that technical stuff. The system just handles it all for you. All you need to do is pair the transmitter and receiver, which takes a couple seconds, and the screen on the transmitter even walks you through it. The receiver stays paired to the transmitter after that, so on a daily basis, all you really need to do is plug them in and turn them on. I should note that the receiver will only pair to one transmitter at a time, so when I wanted to switch between the body pack and handheld, I had to redo the pairing. This can be tedious, though I suppose it's also a safety feature. Like most wireless systems, you can use only one transmitter at a time per receiver. So having to repair protects you from the chaos that would ensue if both transmitters went live. 
Of course, this being a wireless microphone system, audio quality is perhaps the most important thing. Since it's digital, AVX is very clean. And to help with the ease of use even more, it has a form of automatic gain control. Now, this isn't the kind you may have dealt with before, where the noise floor goes crazy when no one's talking. What it really seems to do is just keep tabs on the signal so it doesn't peak and distort. You can go from quiet to loud without such a jarring change. It seems to be less auto gain control and more normalization or dynamic range compression. In any case, I found that I could skip my normal audio post-processing, which of course saves time. All right, let's wrap this up. So who do I think AVX is best suited for? Instead of looking at it from the type of content you create, whether it be films, news stories, YouTube videos, maybe it's better to look at who would use it. Overwhelmingly, AVX is for those who know they need good audio, but also want a wireless system that's simple to use and really reliable. It's for photographers who also have to handle sound. It's for solo content creators who already have enough to worry about. And ultimately, it's for those who need wireless audio that will just work. Once again, I'd like to offer a big thank you to Sennheiser for sending out an AVX system for me to review. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't already. That helps me out quite a bit. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.